Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are shifting gears a little bit and we're focusing on the transmission for Project Dale. So stay tuned. So as you guys can see right now, we do have the engine just about ready to put in. Uh, everything is pretty well ready for that to drop into the vehicle. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to get the transmission in the same condition. But we had to figure out what was wrong. Now, as you can see, this one does say that it's NFG. And for those of you who don't know what that means, no friggin' good. Uh, so I bought this core for a hundred bucks and we tore into it today to see what we could find was the problem with it and why it was NFG. So a little bit of background story. My dad is a transmission mechanic of over 30 years and you know, the, this was kind of his specialty getting into these older transmissions. But when we tore everything apart, there was no visible signs of any issues, uh, right down to the clutch pack, the pump, um, all the stuff that I don't know names to. But when we first tore the uh, transmission pan off and started tearing the valve body out, there was one spot where it looked like there was possibly no check ball where there was supposed to be. And some of the springs looked like they had been changed out, uh, possibly a shift kit. Let me show you. So in the pan sits the valve body. And there are a couple of uh, different springs here. That one there is not necessarily colored, looks like an original one. Uh, but inside this piece, whatever it is, Dad says it's a pink spring and normally they're not pink. Um, so that tells us that someone's been in, in here and, and maybe put a shift kit, some stiffer springs or whatever. And sometimes that may require the check ball or a check ball uh, in the valve body to be removed to uh, either let fluid flow in a certain direction or not. Um, but again, we don't know. And when you pick up a transmission that is a core that is bad, you anticipate finding exactly what's wrong with it when you tear into it. But we don't know what the symptoms were uh, and we don't know whether it had, uh, by the looks of things, it had all the gears and uh, we really can't find anything wrong with it. So we're trying to determine where to go from here. One option is to put the transmission back together, put it in the truck, see what happens. Um, you know, that, that could prove to be problematic should the problem initiate right away. But if you can put it in, put it in gear, take it for a drive, see if it's shifting and see what, what's actually going on, we may be able to determine what the actual problem was. Who knows? We don't know where to go at this point. So uh, as it sits right now, everything is tore apart um, we're likely just, you know, get some new seals and gaskets and all that stuff and, and put it back together. Uh, but it is lunchtime, so we're going to kind of sit on it, see what we're going to do, and uh, hope for the best. So, yeah, we got a transmission all tore apart and a, and a truck that we uh, don't have an engine in yet. Uh, all this stuff is sold, the engine and transmission, like I told you. And uh, this past weekend, I was going to do the engine swap and um, you know you guys were probably anticipating that video coming out really soon but what ended up happening was um, I let the fellow know that I was buying the engine and transmission or that was that I was selling the engine and transmission to that I was going to be doing the motor swap and he indicated to me that he would sooner have the two of them together that way the new engine the higher horsepower engine wasn't potentially going to be destroying the old original transmission and I had to respect that because you know he's already paid for everything <clears throat> and I wanted to make sure that uh, you know I wasn't doing any harm to the existing drivetrain because obviously that's the value if everything works then I get my money uh, if it doesn't then I have to give money back so uh, I opted to wait on the uh, engine swap and uh, until we get the transmission figured out and wonder you know what's going on with this so once we get that rebuilt uh, or put that together We'll get that and the engine done kind of all at the same time. Um, and then we're likely in a position where we've got to figure out what is wrong with that transmission. Never know. We may put it back together. Might work fine. I don't know. As a rule, you don't just label a transmission NFG for no good reason. So um, once we figure out what we're going to do, I'll get right back to you. 
Okay, so this is the next day and uh, we've torn down this transmission about as far as we figure we need to go. And here, here's what we know. We know that this transmission has been rebuilt not that long ago because with the different color springs uh, in different components, the pump, the valve body, there was something, whatever little accumulate, I don't know what the heck they call it. Uh, anyways, it had a different color spring. Um, there's a couple of pieces that had some upgrades that Dad noticed and says this thing has been rebuilt at one time. It's been beefed up. I know a lot of you guys say the 700R4s were weak and in their factory, uh, the factory way they were built, yes, they were a little bit weak. Um, but this one does have a few beefed up components in it, according to Dad. Again, I'm not the transmission guy. And says that he's comfortable with assembling this thing back uh, the basically the way that we got it. So we've got a couple of uh, pieces that we've got to go find. Um, the governor cover, the speedometer gear was missing, uh, the dipstick tube was missing, and uh, obviously a torque converter and flywheel were missing. All that obviously is going to go with the uh, with the engine and transmission on Dale currently. So uh, the other thing that we know that we noticed was the cooler lines coming out of the transmission were cut and they were pinched off almost as if to say somebody junked a vehicle and you know when it come to pull the transmission out of it they just snipped the lines off uh, and the same thing with the with the electric uh, plug-in on the side it was just snipped off so this was likely and this is what we're thinking pulled out of a scrapped or a junked vehicle or a wrecked vehicle for that matter and some local guy here came and bought that up as a core to uh, potentially rebuild someday. Uh, they didn't want to take a chance on just throwing it in somebody's vehicle and wrote an FG uh, on it, uh, knowing that they should rebuild it before they send it out and, and warranty it, stand behind it, stuff like that. So dad thinks we might have gotten lucky. I'm hoping so. Uh, we've got everything that we need. Uh, a good friend of ours here in town who uh, owns a transmission shop has just about all these little missing pieces that we need, including a very good used torque converter that he had in his own truck. He says, I've only got a few thousand miles on it uh, because he ended up doing an LS swap on his OBS and twin turboing it. I'm gonna show you that vehicle uh, someday in the near future. But anyway, uh, so he took that torque converter out. It's just sitting there. He's gonna give me a really good deal on all these uh, used pieces. I'll let you guys know what that is as soon as I get it. And the goal is that hopefully tomorrow, which will be Thursday before Good Friday, we will get all these parts together. Dad's going to rebuild the transmission, get it put back together. And then Friday being Good Friday, a three-day weekend, hopefully this is the weekend that we can pull the motor in trans, get the new one put together, installed, and get Dale driving with its new power plant. So that's the goal. We think that we've made out okay on this transmission, but unfortunately we're not gonna know until we get it in the truck and start driving it. So there's the update on the transmission. Uh, tomorrow is likely the day that Dad will get everything put back together. And um, he had to go out and, and grab a few more seals and gaskets and just little stuff, like I said, uh, a TV cable and a couple of other little things. Anyway. So that's the plan. Tomorrow, get the transmission rebuilt. Uh, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or somewhere in, in amongst there, we will get the uh, drivetrain that's in there currently yanked out, put the new stuff in, get everything broke in, get it all hooked up, and hopefully be driving this thing by Sunday. That's the goal. I'm pretty excited. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I know it was, wasn't much, but other than just me talking about a transmission and uh, what we're going to do about trying to get it fixed up. But now you know and uh, the proof will be in the pudding once we get installed in the truck and, and see how it's going to go from there. So don't forget the Car Guy and Six Fan Show Thursday evening starting at 7 o'clock Central 8 Eastern. We are coming up to the end of Season 3. So uh, we've only got a couple shows left. Uh, we've got a very special guest coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. So you're not going to want to miss that. And uh, we're going to take some time off this summer and we'll be back with you again for Season 4 and more changes are coming. So really good stuff. Uh, myself and Grant Tommy, who is Straight Six Fan, I'll share his link right up there. You guys can go over and check out his channel. 
Uh, he's working on a couple of vehicles over there. One is he's got a Toyota Tacoma. He's also got a, a new, I think it's a 15 EcoBoost Mustang, as well as a 78 Ford Fairmont. That seems to be the focus of his uh, uh, channel here right now. So go over there, hit him up, and uh, also uh, make sure that you subscribe to him because that way you'll get notified when the Car Guy and Six Fan Show does go live. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you all. God bless. Hope you're staying safe during this, whatever it is, uh, and things change very, very soon. But in the meantime, you can keep watching Old Car Guy and Straight Six Fan and all the other automotive YouTube channels out there for your entertaining pleasure.